After the disciples had completed their first missionary journeys and rejoined Jesus, they remained with him in the lands beside the Sea of Galilee. Then the day came when he led them to new territory, toward the seaports of Tyre and Sidon on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. These areas had been preponderantly Gentile since their invasion and occupation by the legions of Alexander the Great. During three and a half centuries, their people had become pagan Grecian in religion and culture. The journey was continually interrupted as Jesus ministered to bodies and to minds, not only to those who worshiped Judaism, but to those who were scorned as Gentiles. travels had led them north and west. Now they turned eastward toward the area near Caesarea Philippi. And by two and two, the disciples spoke to the people of the district. At often recurring intervals, Jesus withdrew from all men, even the twelve, to meditate and seek guidance. Yes. Road and they to hear it. Welcome. 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 Welcome back. Well, did you go to the marshes? No. By the Grotto of Pan. And twice as many people came as yesterday. They'd hoped to hear the master. But they stayed to hear us. Where's he? Up on the hill alone. There's something been troubling him lately. Lately? Ever since we left Capernaum. What can it be? The people have welcomed him, opened their hearts to him. No one here has threatened him as they did in Jerusalem. Nevertheless, something weighs on him. I've seen him studying us, looking at us. Yes, so have I. As though there was something he wanted to tell us. Why should he hesitate to tell us anything? Surely he trusts us? But I still think that... Master. Master. Teacher. Master. Simon and I spoke in your name in the north. One man gave us five pieces of silver for the purse. My brother and I went to the villages on the Damascus Road. And Peter and I taught at the grotto. But it was you whom they wanted to hear. Yes, even the cities. Your name is on everyone's lips. Who do men say that I am? Well, some say that you are John the Baptist risen from the dead. Some say Elijah. Jeremiah. One of the prophets. They know not which one. But who do you say that I am? You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church, and the powers of death shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Pay heed to me, all of you. Say nothing of this to any man. The time is not yet come for it to be revealed. But, Master... Lord, I must go again to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes. I shall be killed. No, Master, no, Master. But on the third day, I shall rise from the dead. Master, you shouldn't speak of suffering and of death. God forbid, Lord. This shall never happen to you. Get thee behind me, Satan. For you are not on the side of God, but of men. If any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. 
For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world but forfeit his life? For what can a man give in return for his life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father. And then he will repay every man for what he has done. Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Six days later, he took with him Peter and James and John and went up on the mountain to pray. countenance was altered, and he was transfigured before them. And his garments became glistening, intensely white, as no fuller on earth could bleach them. And behold, two men talked with him, and they were Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his departure, which he was to accomplish at Jerusalem. And as they watched, a voice came from the cloud, saying, This is my beloved son. Listen to him. what they had seen until the Son of Man should have risen from the dead. Now it came to pass that certain of the disciples were preaching nearby. And the Master has said, Do not labor for things that do not last, for food which perishes and is no more, but work for the food that endures to life eternal. Let me throw, let me throw. Honored teachers, aid my son. Is he ill? He is the victim of an evil spirit. And when he is in this power, he falls. His limbs are tormented. And he is flung about on the ground like a mad dog. Cast out the evil spirit. Cast it out, I beg you. Who gave you the authority to heal? You will anger the spirit. Make it destroy him. Oh, yeah. Here he is. There is their leader. mercy on my son. He is an epileptic, and he is my only child. He suffers terribly. Often he falls into the fire, into the water. I brought him to your disciples, and they could not heal him. Oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. How long has he had this? From childhood. If you can do anything, have pity on us. Help him. All things are possible to him who believes. I believe. Help my unbelief. Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. The boy is dead. The evil spirit has killed him.
Master, why couldn't we cast out the evil spirit? Because of your little faith. For truly I say to you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move hence to yonder place, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. The long journey to the north reached its conclusion. Jesus and the Twelve returned to Capernaum on the western shore of the Galilean Sea. And the time for Jesus to be received up was at hand, and he set his face toward Jerusalem. And it was the season of the Passover feasts, and the roads were thronged with the people of Israel traveling toward the holy city. What a relief washing the dust out of my throat. Never have I seen so many foot scuffers on the road. Never have I seen so many people going to the feast. I've been wondering all morning, how many of them are followers of the Master? Well, it's hard to tell. Of course, I recognized a lot from Galilee. And I saw a few from that village in Samaria. Oh, bring that one, will you? It belongs to Judas. Bring Judas's water bag? <laughs> he should be fetching for us. We followed the master before he did. I'll take it to him if it bothers you. No, it's not the fetching. It's the man. Always acting as though he looked down on the rest of us because we came from Galilee. So filled with self-importance because we let him keep the purse. Well, it's only his manner. I'm not so sure, John. Always crowding in at the master's right side, taking authority on himself. I think it's time Judas was put in his place. How hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom. Your pardon, sir. Yes? Isn't that Jesus, the one the people call the prophet? Yes, it is. It did the Nazarene. Truly, I say to you, everyone who has left houses, our brothers or sisters, a mother or children, or lands for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. But many that are first will be last, and the last first. Master, bless our little ones, I beseech you. No, you must not bother the master. No, Peter. Suffer little children to come unto me, and forbid them not. For of such is the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter. As they journeyed on, Jesus led the twelve apart and spoke again of the trials he would undergo in Jerusalem. But they understood none of these things. This saying was hidden from them and they did not grasp what was said. Master. Teacher, we wish to ask a certain thing of you. What do you want me to do for you? Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left when you come into your kingdom. You do not know what you are asking. Yes, we do, Master. We've earned the right. Are you able to drink the cup that I am to drink? Oh, yes, Master. We are able. You will drink my cup. But to sit at my right hand and at my left is not mine to grant. But it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my father. By what right did the sons of Zebedee make such a demand? We've been as loyal as they. Yes, Master. Yes, we have. Come. Come to me. You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lorded over them, and their great men exercise authority over them. 
not so shall it be among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever would be first among you must be your slave. Even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Bethany near Jerusalem, women mourners gathered in the home of Mary and Martha to grieve with them for the death of their brother Lazarus. No, in the resurrection at the last day. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord. I believe you are the Christ the Son of God, He who is coming into the world. Summon your sister. Where have you laid him? Lord, come and see. And when they came to the tomb where the body of Lazarus had lain for four days, Jesus bade them to remove the stone. you would believe, you would see the glory of God. Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. I knew that thou hearest me always, but I have said this on account of the people standing by that they may believe that thou didst send me. Lazarus, come forth.
It was the month of Nisan, the beginning of the Hebrew year, when Jesus reached Bethany, close by the great city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, the holy city. Jerusalem, where he had foretold his arrest, his trials, his suffering. The great temple dominated the metropolis. It was the focal point for the hordes of the devout making their annual pilgrimage to observe the week of the Passover. From east, west, north, and south they came by tens, hundreds, thousands, overflowing the city, camping outside the walls. Roman troops had been brought in from outlying posts to augment the garrison stationed at the fortress of Antonio, a grim precaution against the possibility of revolt. As was customary, Pontius Pilate, the procurator of Judea, had come to the city from his governor's mansion at Caesarea. More and more and more. Greater numbers than last year. Why don't they chant their prayers, burn their offerings in their home villages? Why must they clutter the roads, waste days on end? We want to have more men patrolling the streets. On a sign more, if your Excellency thinks it's advisable to weaken the reserve, half a cohort. Pax Romana. Excellency? Coddle the conquered. Collect taxes, keep the peace with half a cohort where a division would be too few. I'd be glad when this week is over. There was tension in the talk of the multitude. Not of insurrection, but because of a story told, retold, whispers of a miracle that had taken place a short distance beyond the Kidron Valley. And when they had rolled aside the great stone covering the door, the Nazarene prayed to the Lord God and commanded the dead one, Lazarus, to come from the tomb. The body sat up, and when they removed the winding claws, he was alive, living, just like you or you or, or I. Truly, this Jesus of Nazareth is a prophet, a messenger sent by God, I have heard of the wonders he has done in Galilee, but I always thought that this he, was... he has done here before witnesses. He has command over death itself. If it's true, not that I doubt your word, Father, but if it is, why hasn't Jesus been brought to the temple and honored by the high priest? What does Caiaphas think of him? He's a sorcerer, a charlatan. This is a trick. This is an illusion to to awe the gullible. But there were so many witnesses, my Lord Caiaphas. The mourners, the sisters, they all saw the dead man rise in the tomb, saw him unbound. They know that he lives. Then he never died, obviously. He pretended to be dead, laid in the tomb, in order to help a false messiah perform a false miracle. Of course, of course. That's the only possible explanation. But nearly as many witnesses saw Lazarus in death. The physician who attended him, the woman who anointed his body with oil, his friends and kinsmen who bore his corpse to the tomb. All loyal followers of Jesus? Loyal enough to lie for him? That's it. That's it. I fear not, Excellencies. Some, perhaps, but many of irreproachable character, undoubted reputation. Every time I go to the temple, I'm besieged by questions as to the source of Jesus' power, whether it comes from God or from... It comes from Satan. Satan? The devil himself. Tell that to anyone who asks. Yes. Yes, Excellencies. A magician. A messenger from Beelzebub. When this story is spread among the people, and they believe... They won't. Oh, but they must. Coming from you, the high priest. They want to believe that death can be conquered. By good, not evil. That's what they will believe, no matter what we say or do. You should have had the Nazarene destroyed before he became too well known. Ah. Uh, How we may have to do it at a most embarrassing time. Not embarrassing, impossible. Pilate has demanded that trouble be avoided during the period of the feasts. If we should make one move against the Nazarene now, surrounded as he is by followers... But he may move on us first. Yes, he may. What do we do then? 
We may try prayer. Prayer? Prayer that the Nazarene practices the peace he preaches. sent two of his disciples to a village opposite the Mount of Olives, saying to them, As you enter it, you will find a donkey's colt tied. Untie it and bring it. And they brought the colt to Jesus and spread their robes on it, and he sat upon it. from Galilee. The man who raised Lazarus? It is Jesus of Nazareth. Well, what is it? What is it shouting? Is it a riot? The people are greeting the Nazarene. They're hailing him as king. As king? As king of the Jews. That's the temple garden. Hurry, come. <laughs> who called you king. Come. Let us return to Bethany. His heart wept within him, for those about him knew not the ways of peace. And he foresaw the day when not one stone of the great temple would be left upon another.